Professor Clements with you again as we go through the material on uh, induced EMF, induced current. We've uh, discussed Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Here's an application. So let's imagine that we have a refrigerator and this refrigerator is spinning. The motor is spinning, not the refrigerator. But uh, the situation for this electric motor is it's also a generator. It contains a magnetic field across a region where there's a turning coil. So there will be a, uh, an EMF generated by the electric motor, its coil, and that's called a back EMF in agreement with Lenz's law. The EMF opposes the change that's taking place. Um, we close the switch here and it's really alternating current, not direct current, but uh, we have this alternating current driving the motor. Uh, the Lenz's law analysis tells us that the motor will generate an EMF in the reverse direction. And this EMF will be zero to you know, close to 120, normally a little bit less than 120 for uh, uh, common electric motors. But the back EMF is zero at a certain time. Tell me when it is zero. Tell yourself when it is zero. Well, if the motor is not spinning, then there'll be no change of flux and no back EMF. So we'll get a really big current at the start when the refrigerator motor turns on, and then the uh, current will decrease as the back EMF increases. You know, for example, this is not the typical case, but suppose the back EMF was 120 volts and we're driving it with 120 volts AC. These two would cancel and there'd be no current. So obviously we don't want the electric motor to have no current going through it. We want it to keep on spinning, overcome friction. Uh, so the back EMF is less than 120 volts. But it is a significant effect. The current is much less when the motor is up to speed. And you should be very careful working with electric motors if the uh, bearings uh, freeze up such that the coil stops turning, you'll want to unplug that motor right away or you'll start to smell a burned smell. That would be the insulation burning and melting due to high current in the motor. Uh, so here's a refrigerator and there's a light here above the refrigerator. Uh, you might have experienced this. You've heard the refrigerator motor kick on and at the same time the refrigerator lights dimmed briefly. And what is happening here in the electric motor in the refrigerator, um, again when it turns on it's not spinning immediately so it has no back EMF so there's a high current going into the electric motor. That causes a high current in the household wiring for this room and causes a voltage drop in that wiring the light bulb no longer has 120 volts across it. There's been a voltage drop from uh, the high current in the household wiring. Not a dangerous current for, it's not a dangerous amount of time. Um, the circuit breaker would trip if it uh, was a problem. But uh, there is an IR drop, V equals IR, drop in the wiring. So there's less than 120 volts across the light bulb. The light bulb doesn't put out as much light. When the motor gets up to speed, the refrigerator is no longer drawing a high current and the IR drop, the V equals IR drop in the household wiring is now less. The light bulb goes back to 120 volts across it and it shines as it should. So, back EMF. Transformers. Uh, if you're going to take a trip to Europe or Africa, Australia someplace, um, you want to check in to see if the uh, use 120 volts or 240 volts and there's also a frequency difference that's not as critical for the electronic equipment. Uh, our, our power is on 60 cycles, your power is on 50 cycles. Um, your modern day electronics probably uh, the transformer, the little brick that comes with your laptop or cell phone recharger it can probably accommodate uh, up to 240 volts and you won't need one of these extra transformers, but don't plug your hair dryer into a uh, wall outlet in Europe uh, using an adapter without a transformer also being in use. Um, so 
and make sure some of these devices don't have a transformer built in. They're just the uh, to modify the plug connection. Make sure if you are using a device that's not designed for 240 volts that you also carry a transformer and uh, use that to step down the voltage to 120 volts instead of 240. Uh, you will burn out your electronics. So how do transformers operate? Well, a transformer uses Faraday's law of induced EMF. And we have two coils, electrically not connected, so there's insulating material in these wires. But we have a variable current, alternating current, coming into coil one. I'll call this the primary coil, coil one. That variable current will create a variable magnetic field in this uh, coil. The iron here is to concentrate the magnetic field and sort of guide the magnetic field through coil two, the secondary coil. As the magnetic field comes through here, it's a variable magnetic field because we have variable current in the primary coil, creating a variable magnetic field. So here we have a situation of change of flux. Magnetic field is uh, changing. That's going to create an EMF in the secondary coil. And the analysis of this is that the EMF, the voltage across the secondary coil, equals the voltage on the primary coil multiplied by the number of turns of wire on the secondary divided by the number of turns of wire on the primary. And uh, you can do example problems on that and uh, look on YouTube for example problems. Approximately the power in the uh, primary coil equals the power in the secondary and my formatting has changed a little bit here. This is I2 times V2 on the right side. Power is measured by I times V and approximately the power going into the primary coil equals the power on the secondary coil. There is a little bit of loss. Um, there can be heating of the transformer if eddy currents become too large. So there's special construction that we won't go into for the transformers, but um, pretty high efficiency. The power going into the primary becomes power available in the secondary. And you can see from this uh, calculation here, the voltage in the secondary is going to change. This particular transformer is wired as a step-down transformer. There are fewer turns of wire in the secondary compared to the primary. So the voltage will be less, but the current will be higher. Uh, the V and the I just uh, work in reverse directions. If voltage becomes higher, current becomes lower. So that's our transformer. How is it used in our society? Well, at the power plant, um, nuclear, coal, what have you, uh, there is a uh, certain voltage out of the turbine. And it may be 12 kilovolts, it may be less. But there will be a step up transformer near the power plant and then long distance wires running at high voltage, you know, 400,000 volts. The purpose here is to reduce the energy loss. And again, I had a little format loss in transferring to a different presentation software, but this is I squared R. The power loss in the long distance lines is calculated with the square of the current times R. So the step up transformer increases the voltage on these wires and decreases the current. Again, I times V is our power. So with 12 kilovolts, there'll be a certain current. If we change this to 400 kilovolts, now the current decreases by a factor of 12 divided by 400. Uh, so we get a lower current on these long distance lines and we don't waste as much energy. Near a city, there'll be a substation that uh, brings the voltage back down for safety purposes. Maybe 13,000 volts on the uh, power lines going down a street. And then there'll be transformers from the neighborhood that drops it down to 240 volts. And uh, three lines coming in and uh, two of those lines that can give us 120 volts. But more details than we need. But step up transformers, high voltage going cross country saves energy. And now a little more on safety. We've talked about safety in the past a little bit, but we have circuit breakers in a house to limit the current. And the accepted color of the dangerous wire in household wiring is black, but you should not rely on that. Um, if you are rewiring a switch, 
you definitely should have the circuit breaker open before you uh, probe wiring and you probably want to have some type of electrical meter to make sure that you threw the proper circuit breaker. Um, we have a case of the appliance with a three-prong three -prong plug then the case will be grounded. If there's some short circuit in here uh, from the hot wire to the case uh, we won't uh, create an electrical hazard. So the three-prong plug the green wire being the ground and attached to the case of the appliance to provide safety. You've also probably seen ground fault interrupt plugs, uh, outlets, where there's a sensor in that uh, ground fault interrupt where it can detect the size of the current um, going to the device and coming back from the device. And if it detects that there's been a change, some current leaking through a human body perhaps or something else, it'll trip a little circuit breaker here at the uh, at the outlet so uh, very popular near water sinks uh, and so forth if you have an electrical outlet a few words on inductors if we have a coil of wire uh, that creates an inductor if we have mag magnetic material iron going through this that will enhance the inductive effect again if we have changing current through here we'll have changing magnetic field this coil will create its own EMF that opposes the incoming EMF. Well, the inductor can be used in circuits where we want to somehow modify the uh, changing uh, current that comes through the circuit. Uh, here's an example of a resistor and inductor hooked up in series. L is the uh, symbol for an inductor and a coil of wire symbol here. If we connect the uh, uh, resistor inductor combination to this battery the battery is going to try to push current through the inductor. The inductor will have Lenz's Law active and will create an opposing EMF that limits the current very strongly at the beginning and then gradually the current will build up to a final value. If we then switch to position 2 the current will try to drop to zero. There's magnetic energy stored in this inductor and that will drive current through the circuit eventually the energy will be used up and the current will go down to zero. But the inductor has an effect that's different than the capacitor effect um, and complementary in some sense. That, uh, we can also hook capacitor, inductor, and resistor in series. The inductor uh, tends to block current when the frequency is high. The capacitor tends to block current when the frequency is low. Remember there's an insulator in between the plates. So if the charge builds up too much, if the frequency is low, the capacitor will limit the current. There is a uh, sort of sweet spot frequency at which the current will be a maximum through here. So that's an LRC series circuit, or RLC series circuit, and uh, can be useful in electronics if we want to uh, let a certain frequency signal come on through the device. Uh, that will happen uh, if we select the capacitor value and inductor value to the proper numbers and we won't uh, do that calculation. So there's our end of uh, material on induction, Faraday's law, inducing current and you should practice some problems.